Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are ready to start now. Good evening. Only just two cameras on and the rest. I don't know what's going on here. In a few minutes, teacher. Good evening, teacher. Okay, okay, in a few minutes. Good evening, sir. How are you? Ah, what's going on with my camera? Okay, my camera's there. I need to adjust the light. Okay, what else do we need to do? Okay. Here we go. We got 12 students today. Only 12, no more than 12. Good evening, Mr. Soyayan. Hello, sir. How are you? Hello, teacher. Hi, how are you? Good. Okay. Today we are going to make a review about the different topic that we have studied.
Okay. Let us see what we're going to do. I don't see any camera on. Okay, here we go. So please, I need that you turn on your cameras. I'm not ready to serve. Hello. Okay, here we go. Ana Beatriz. Present teacher. Okay, Ana Lilian. Present. Carlos Bautista. Present teacher. Escobar. Present. Claudia. Present. Galileo. Present, sir. Jonathan. Present, Mr. Rodrigo. Juan Carlos. Carlos is not there. Laura. Maria Concepcion. Present teacher. Maria Elena. Present teacher. Mayra Beralice. Present teacher. Miguel Ángel.
Kaira. Present teacher. Santos, Misael. Present teacher. Wendy Maribel. Present teacher. Jenny. Yesenia Lisset. Diego. And Brian Javier. Brian. It's not here, Brian. No, it's not Brian. Okay, Carlos, Jose, Jonathan, Elizabeth. Cameras, cameras, cameras. Present teacher. A mí no me nombró, pero present. As I told, I can call you. Martinez, Elizabeth, let me see if it is right. Yes, it is there. Okay, today we are going to make a review product and review about different topic that we have started. Based on that, I need to This is the one. And in other words, what we are going to do is just make a review of what the unit three. And uh, we are going to clarify some topics that maybe are not really clear for you. And at the same time, we are going to work in some activity that, that we missed, okay? Okay, <clears throat> let us start talking about this activity that we have in, on page number, let me see the number of the page 26. So please go to the page 26. And we are going to talk about building the vocabulary. Right here, we are going to run the advantages as prototyping from most relevant to least relevant. And you are going to discuss ranking with a pattern. In order to do this, um, what I would like to say is that uh, we are talking about the previous uh, topic that was class number 16, where we talk about prototypes and the important that uh, a prototype have 
before to launch a, a new product. Okay, for the reason we are going to start working in this activity, building the vocabulary. And what you are going to do is just to look for the most relevant that is going to be number one. And the least relevant is going to be number six. And you got it here. Obtain more detail to describe the product more effectively. Verify the functionality of the product. Example given identify flow that we're now foreseen in the design state. Review initial product change or branding image. Elicit feedback from customer or early adopter. Assess the performance of various material. Ensure potential manufacturer are capable of making the prototype. Sourcing the part, putting them together, and etc. Okay, you are going to have time in order to um, to run the advan the advantages of prototyping from the most relevant to the least according to your point of view. Okay, you are going to have some minutes in order to do this, and later on we are going to discuss it with somebody else, and that way we are. Uh, starting the review. Okay. Any questions so far from here? No? Teacher. Hello? What page? I'm sorry. It's 26. Okay, thank you. 26. It is the page. Okay, let us start working on it, please. Maybe number one, review initial product check or branding image.
I guess some of you already finished. I don't know if you want to share your classification. Who wants to start with really? it? And you can say, okay, in my case, I consider the most relevant, the number one for me is this. And you start talking about it, okay? From one to six. the most relevant for me is verify the functionality of the product, e.g. identify flat flow loops that were not foreign in the design stage. Ah, okay. That is the number one for you? Yes, for me, this. Okay, okay. Thank you. Let us see the number one first. Somebody else have a different opinion? It teacher me? Is, is different opinion. <laughs> For me, is review the initial product shape or branding imaging. Image. Ah, okay. Image. Why? Could you could you tell us? Give us some reason why you consider that is uh, the most relevant for you? Because is the um, star for the product. Uh, we need uh, ideas, um, design, uh, the other aspect uh, for the product. Ah, okay. Good point. Let us see somebody else, please. Teacher. Tell me. For me, is ensure potential manufacturer are capable of making the prototype. So the parts putting them together, etc. Okay, I can see that you have a different opinion, but you need to support your ideas why you consider that that is the, the most relevant. Okay, somebody else? Jen Mas. I am seeing the first is review in the initial Problem. Well, okay, that means that you are in the same um, the same way in with the Escobar. You are agree with the Escobar, right? Yes, I agree with Escobar. Okay. Okay, somebody else? Somebody else? Who else? Who else? Teacher. Tell me. I agree with Saira. Uh -huh. For me, the first is make sure potential manufacturers are able to make in the prototype. Um, because in this way, it manages to verify that the manufacturers are a la, a la altura, como... at, the, at the level of at the level of the needs of the product and identify the difficulties they may have I think 
Okay, as, as you can see, we have different opinion and that is really important. That is the main purpose. What about the rest? What can you tell us? What do you think? You can read it and then later on you can give me your point of view why you decide that that is the number one. Next, please. Okay, I'm still waiting for your answer. But remember, you need to support your idea. What do you think? What do you think is the most relevant aspect? Misael is going to tell us. Uh, from my point of view, teacher, is identifying flaws and verify the functionality to the product. Because um, the first stage is uh, to be sure that the product works or uh, fools our perspective. Wow, okay. To me, it's the, the first, uh, the most relevant aspect. Okay. Thank you. Somebody else? Imagine that you are the manager of your company. And you need to decide which one is the most relevant. What can you tell me about it? Hello, 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 hello. Cameras, cameras, please, cameras on. My voice is being recorded in order to control the calidad, you know. Okay, I need to know what are you thinking about it? Right now we are just talking about the most relevant, but what about if, if, if we talk about the, the least relevant in this case for you? What is, tell me, which one? Hey. Teacher, <laughs> oh. I consider it relevant to obtain comment from customer or from the first user because I will depend on the acceptance on the product of the product to be able to produce it. Okay. For me. <laughs> yeah, it's a story. It's your uh, point of view. Okay. Because remember, we have a, 
we have different pers uh, perspective. We see it in a, from different angles, you know. But in this case, you need to base on the. We have talked about this topic. Uh, you need to to give me your point of view. Okay, I'm still waiting. Maybe somebody else has a, a different opinion. Me, teacher. Okay, Michelle. I was thinking about, and I'm still, uh, I'm not sure between two um, ideas. Ah, okay. For the for example, obtain more details to describe the product more effectively, or re review initial product shapes and images. Because um, if the product has green light to go outside, I guess um, obtain more details can be later, after a few weeks, a few days, and also at the same time if we want to like uh, send another image or, or a better we can review the initial product shape so uh, that's why i'm thinking about uh, the number six and number five between those oh, okay. ideas okay okay nice I think the least relevant is review initial product shapes for branding image teacher. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let us see somebody else. Jenny, Jenny, Jenny. <laughs> Close the microphone and, and open the microphone again. The second teacher. Oh, for okay. Me. okay, the second one for you. Yes. Okay, okay go ahead. <laughs> tell me. For me, uh, ensure potential manufacturers are capable of making the prototype. Is the second. And the third one for you? What? The first, first. one. At yep. uh, first, it um, was uh, verify the functionality of the product, e.g., identify clues that were not foreign in, in the design stage. It's the first. In second, los recursos, no es como así. Okay, the resources. Uh, second, resources. Okay. okay. For me, the branding is. Is 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 finally finished? Okay. Teacher, in the second point, I agree with Jenny. Ah, okay. Only second second point. <laughs> oh, only in the second one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, somebody else? Because um, if I can say verify the functionality of the product, I mean, uh, identify flow that we're not foreseen in the design state. That means that uh, there is a previous state before this one. Because at this moment, uh, we already got the, we already had the prototype, you know? But how we are going to build it? Is going to be a square, it's going to be round, 
triangle. Think about it. And also, uh, we, are, we need to assess the performance of various material, how they are going to work in the prototypes. And right here it says something. Ensure potential manufacturers are capable of making the prototype. En este paso todavía no se ha hecho el prototipo. Yo creo que ya, ya hoy sí. Eh, you are going to have another perspective. I know who is going to give us uh, the answer of this. Claudia is going to be. Hello, Claudia. What can you tell Hello. us? What can you tell us about this process? I know. Uh, what, what do you think? What do you think? That is the most relevant. Uh, uh, to verify the functionality of the product. Example given, identify flaws that we're not forcing in the design stage. Ah, okay. Okay. But you need to, to, to help. What, what is the meaning of uh, foreseen in the design stage? That we're yeah. not foreseen in the design stage. Yeah. So like don't have the knowledge in that moment when they were designing that is if they decide that they choose it will be functionally when it's done producing okay at the moment uh they never uh, so that something could happen, right? Yes. It's like when the architect decide something uh, and they and they, for, and they forgot to to make a letter in order to go to the second floor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> something like that. Yes, it's clear. Okay, right here maybe we can have a different uh point of view. And according to your, your abilities that, that you have, but reading and making like a, a common sense in this part, um, right here in, in this one, in the last one that said that ensure potential manufacturer are capable of making the prioritize that means that um, in this moment, what you need to do is just to be sure that everything is going to work and that you are going to have also the material in order to create the prototype. As soon as you have it, you are going to verify the functionality of the product, if it is working or not. But also, um, before that, maybe you need to assess the perform performance of various material. Yes. And also, uh, maybe it, it is kind of, it was difficult to, 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 to say, but uh, as soon as you finish, you are going to make a review about the initial product shape and branded image. If uh, it doesn't fit what the people is expecting, maybe you need to make some modification 
before to to launch it to start the, the, the production right for that reason i told you it, it, it is really difficult but uh to see exactly uh which uh a stage is going to be the third one, but according to the material that we got here and seeing that all the process that we need to follow could be in this way, but you can have a different opinion about that. And um, somebody could say that the last one is to obtain more detail to describe the product more efficiently. But remember that we need to think on the way how people is going to see the product. And, and we are talking about handling. Do you remember that? We need to think about that too, because in that way, uh, as soon as people see the product on the, on the market, they are going to decide, they are going to, uh, to see it, to test it and, and buy it later on, okay? But you are right when you say, okay, my opinion, I consider it okay. There is no standard way that said, okay, this, this is going to be the first process, but this is a common sense, as I told you. Okay, thank you very much for your opinions. Sometimes uh, this kind of, of topic, uh, tend to be kind of controversial, but we need to read carefully because in that way we are going to understand and, and sometimes uh, we can just say, okay, we are going to start doing this, but before to build a house, what, what, what do we need in order to start building a house, for example? Uh, make the budget. Ah, okay. Okay. But somebody else could say a different opinion. Yeah. Complain. Yeah, you see. But, but what we need to do is just to, to see uh, according to the, the situation that somebody could say, okay, first of all, I need to have the land where I'm going to to build my house, but, but when you say, okay, I need to make my budget, that means that you already have it and you didn't mention it, right? Yes, and somebody could say, okay, I need to buy all the, the raw material that I'm going to need it. But somebody could say, okay, before to start building a house, you need to have a design. You need to talk with a, an, uh, an engineer in order that uh, he can design what you want and you are going to tell you know, tell her how you, 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 you want it. It's kind of difficult, but sometimes we need to follow some, um, some rules, but in this case, creating prototype, uh, we need to be careful about that. Industrial engineer, they, they have experience in, 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 in that. I don't know if we have one here. I guess that we got, uh, yo creo que sí tenemos un ingeniero industrial por ahí, pero no vamos a decir el nombre para que no se sienta aludida o aludido. Sí, pero que la te, lo tenemos o la tenemos enfrente de las cámaras. Okay, <laughs> but we are not going to say. Okay, okay, you know, we have uh, different uh, fields here and maybe could have the different perspective about what we are talking about it. Okay, don't worry about it. Let us continue working. Um, let me see the time that we have. Okay, uh, we are going to work later on this part. We have something else that we miss here. Okay, let me see what it is. Okay, this sentence we are going to do it later on in order that I'm going to uh, explain something. Okay, let us work in this uh, building vocabulary 
two, that is on page number, let me see, it is uh, 29. Right here, we are going to rebuild the vocabulary. The term is the chart described, the step of a production process for a shampoo. Match the steps to the corresponding task. Compare answer with a pattern. And right here, we have a different uh, words like mix, quality control, filter, capping, labeling, and packing. Okay, take your time and try to resolve it. Then later on, we are going to compare it. We are, we are talking also about production process and try to solve it, try to read it, and, and try to understand how it could be the process. After the batch is approved, the shampoo is pure in the right amount into the empty bottle. The conveyor belt takes the bottle to the machine where the label with the ingredients and the brand name is tuck on them. The bottle are moved to another machine that puts a cup on every bottle and twists them tight. All the raw material are pured in a batch and mix. The bottle are put into boxes and are ready to be sent to the store. Oh, okay. A sample is sent to be analyzed to ensure it meets specification. Okay, try to resolve, please. Take your time. I hope that you can find the page 29. Ten, take, take some minutes in order to resolve it, and we are going to talk later on about this, okay? Go ahead, go ahead. I'm talking about this one, right?
As soon as you finish, just let me know, please. If you have any question. I'm going to check up the attendance and you can continue working on it. As soon as you hear your name, just say present and continue working. Don't worry about it. Okay, Ana Beatriz. Present. Ana Lilian. Present. Bautista. Present. Escobar. Present. Claudia. Present. Francis. Galileo. Present, sir. Jonathan. Present. Rodrigo. Present. Juan Carlos Rivas. Present teacher. Ahí está Juan Carlos. Laura Carolina. Present teacher. Ok, gracias. Thank you. María Concepción. Present. María Elena. Present teacher. Mayra. Present teacher. Miguel Ángel. Zaira Marleni. Present teacher. Misael. Maribel. Present teacher. Wendy Maribel, okay. Present Jenny. Teacher. Jenny. Present teacher. Ah, está Jenny, okay. Yes. Yesenia Lisset. Lisset. No. Diego. Present teacher. Brian Javier. Brian. Brian. No está Brian. Let me see. I don't see Brian here. Okay, it's not here, it's not here. Okay, let's start talking about this activity. <clears throat> what number is the fair one? Teacher, Hello, for sir. me, for me, mix all the raw materials are present in bash and mixed. 
Ah, okay. Me too, teacher. Me too, okay. teacher. Yes, let, also. Let, let me do something first. Okay, you say overall material. Okay, you say this is number one, number one right? Okay, okay. What about number two, quality control? Uh, number two, teacher, quality control. If after the batch is approved, the shampoo is poured in the right amounts into the empty bottles. Somebody else? For me, teacher, uh, two, quality control is a sample is sent to be analyzed to ensure it meets a specification. I agree. I agree with Diego. Yes. Bingo, 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 bingo. Bingo, bingo because have quality control. A sample is sent to be analyzed to ensure it meets specification. That means that you need to to see if uh, meet all the expectation. Okay. What about number three? After the bath is approved, the shampoo is poured in the correct amount into the empty bottles. Ah, okay. Okay, thank you. Number four, capping, capping. What is capping? Number four, right, teacher? Yes, number four. Uh, the bottles are moved to another machine that puts a cap on every bottle and twist them tight. Ah, okay, okay, bingo, bingo, bingo. Why? Because right here it said to put a cap. And the action is called capping. Okay. The bottles are moved to another machine that puts a cup on every bottle and twist and tie, twist. Okay, number five. Me teacher, labeling. Okay. For me, the conveyor belts take the bottles to the machine where the label with ingredients and the brand name is stuck on them. Okay, bingo, bingo, bingo too. Okay, that one is number five. And the last one. Packing. Which one is the last one? Packing. The bottles are put into the boxes and are ready to be. <laughs> ah, okay. Thank you to tell me. Okay, you got it there. You can compare um, in order to be sure that is uh, in the same way. This is the process. Yeah, number one, all the raw material are per in a batch and mix. The second one is sample is sent to be uh, analyzed to ensure and it meets specification. Number three, is filter after a batch is approved, the shampoo is pure in the right amount into the empty bottles. That is number three. Number four, the bottle are moved to another machine that puts a cup on every bottle and twist them tight. 
Okay. And number five. In number five, we have the conveyor, conveyor belt takes the bottle to the machine where the label with the ingredients and the brand name is tucked on them. Okay. And I got a question for you. I'm going to stop sharing this now. As soon as you go to the market and suddenly you are going to buy a new product, uh, how often do you read the specification and also the ingredients that the product has? Do you used to do it? Hardly ever. Hardly ever? <laughs> okay, in your case, Michelle. Okay, somebody else wants to tell me something about it? Hello? Teacher, can you repeat the question, please? The question is this, how often do you read the specification, the ingredients of a product? As soon as you go to a market and you want to buy a new product, uh, how often do you take your time in order to read all the specification? and characteristic of the product. Or you just see the product and say, okay, I'm going to take this. In my case, always. Okay. I always read the specification. That means uh, when you go to the market, uh, you have a lot of time to see. I have. I have the, <laughs> the brands specific hey, was cool. to, to hey, buy. Okay, <laughs> that is nice. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, we 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 had to do that in order to be sure. And also, when we buy like, uh, something uh, like food, we need to see uh, all the date uh, expiration dates also you need to take into account too. Okay, what else, somebody else? I, in my case, I seldom read the specification. Okay. For me, in the market is not possible, but in the supermarket, in addition, the specification and the expiration date, I am verify the price. <laughs> you check the price, okay? I am check the price. And also ask for a discount. <laughs> okay, that is good. I, in my case, I often read the specifications especially when the product is new. Okay. Okay, okay, that is good, that is good. Have you ever bought a product that only just because you watch it on TV? And you don't read any instructions? No, teacher. Never? No. In my case, I used... never. <laughs> never read the instructions. <laughs> no. 
Ah, only by. Okay, I, I remember once I was uh, in another country and I was reading all the attractions. And a friend of mine said, okay, come on, hurry up. You can read it in, in, in the apartment. And, and I said, no, 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 I'm going to read it before bias. And, 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 he, and he told me, at the end, if you don't want it, you can throw away. And I said, no, I'm not going to throw away my money, you know. When okay. I, I, I can buy, yes, teacher. The specification, not the use. Okay. Mm -hmm. But, but sometimes uh, when you buy uh, some drug or medicine, uh, you need to read it. And we need to be careful about it, you know, in order to see all the components that they, uh, the product has. Even though that we are now uh, uh, doctors, but at least we can, we can understand what the product uh, has. Okay, Elizabeth tiene la mano arriba. I guess she wants to say something about. No? Ah, okay. I was just thinking. Of... Okay, let us continue talking. Let me see where uh, we have another activity that we are going to work on it. Ah, okay, Let, let's go to page number 31. Go to page 31. Please. Right here. And this is a pair word. You, you are going to number the drawing in the correct order to assemble all the part of the bicycle. Okay. We have uh, six different states here. Let us talk about this first. And later on, we are going to continue talking about another topic. Let me create a breakout room. We have 20. That means that I need to make nine. Okay. And the third one is, is going to be integrated by three. Okay, try to do it. Let me see, I'm going to give you like, uh, I get four minutes, it is enough. Four or five minutes. Here we go. Rodrigo, Rodrigo, Rodrigo.
No quiso hablar Bautista conmigo. Microsoft is smooth. It's mute, my microphone is mute. mute. Okay. I saw some of you working alone. I don't know why. As soon as I assign, you need to go to your room and start working with your classmate. That is the main purpose of this activity that you interact each other and you can uh, give your point of view and discuss what do you think okay let us see we have uh, We have different steps. We have pedal, frame, handlebar, shipping, saddle, and wheels. Which one do you consider is the first one? I think it's frame, teacher. Frame. The, the frame? The frame. Oh, okay. What about the wrist? What do you think? I think the frame too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Somebody else? Yeah, it's the frame. Because this day I am learned now algo nuevo. No sé cómo se dice. Something new. Okay, let me see the picture. Let me see the picture. Okay, this the frame. Okay. What about the second one? My uh, second one, hundred bar. Mm. Somebody else? Uh, Shield. Maria Elena? For me, the handlebars. Okay, you say that the handlebar. Okay. Remember that you already got the frames. What do you need next?
Wendy, Wendy, Wendy. What do you need next, Wendy? A handle too. Ah, Myra. What about you, Myra? Number two. Handlebar. Ah, you say handlebar too? Ah, okay. What about you, Maria Concepcion? A handlebar. Ah, you say the handlebar too? Uh huh. Um, what about you, um, Galileo? I don't know if you are working, sir. If you are able to answer, just tell us. Or Jonathan, or Carlos, or Elisa Beth Martinez. Or Saira Marleni, or Rodrigo. The second one. It's uh, number two, it's Handlebar. Handlebar two? It's two. Yes, it's your number two, Handlebar. Really? Okay. Okay, 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 okay. We need to put the, the common sense in order to do this, maybe. Somebody else have, have in a different way? Teacher. Hello, sir. I, I change the opinion, my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> the free the first, uh, step is shipping. You can see it's the, the first step. Shipping? Yes. Mm. In the second, it's free. How is going to be possible? Teacher, I Tell think me. the shipping is the last step because yes. <laughs> when you receive the bicycle, you receive a bicycle disassembly. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I like that kind of discussion. Okay, we are, but, but, but okay, you already talk, you already said that the frame is number one. Okay, I agree with you. But what about the second one? You say the handlebar? Somebody think in a different way? I put the saddle. Uh, you put I, was the saddle. I was hesitating. <laughs> hesitating? Okay. Yes. Okay, somebody else. Take a look at the picture and I'm going the to three read. saddle. Teacher. No, no, no. I'm talking about the second one. Ah, the second one handlebar. Mm. I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting because um how can I tell you this? Um at the moment that you are going to to put the handlebar in in bicycle, um, you need something in order to hold hold the bar, in order to put it. The wheels. Great. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. That is the okay. second one. Based on the picture, you need to take a look at the picture. I know you are so smart. And just with the with, with the word that I say, you you catch the message. Okay, what about the third ones? Who wants to talk about the third ones? We already got uh, the frame and the wheels. What is next? Mm -hmm. The pedals? Yes, it pedals. is, Sarah. 
Okay. And then. And then. The handlebars. So <laughs> then it's, uh, take a look at the picture. It's handlebar. How good it is. Okay. And the number five. The saddle. It is the saddle. And the last one is. What is the last one? Shipping. It is shipping because you are going to send it to different places, right? Okay, that is the process that we need to follow. Agree or disagree? Disagree. Um, disagree? Yes, teacher. In my right. case, I, 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 has, I have to buy a bicycle in uh, other moment. Uh, this is disassembly. I, for me, the first is the frame. The second is handlebars. The third is sandal. Then I put the bicycle al revés. Um, I, I, I got your idea. Upside, um, upside down, upside down. Upside down, that's right. And I, the fourth is pedals. When you have assembly, you can put the, the wells. Ah, okay. And we the can... last is shipping when yeah. the, the, the bicycle is ready to go. Ah, okay. But according to according to engineering, uh, they they said that we need to follow uh, the way that we mentioned it. They said that uh, the third one is frame, the second one is wheel, the third one is pedal, the fourth one is handlebars, number five is saddle, and the last one is shipping. But I respect your point of view because uh, you have bought a bicycle and you saw it in that way, you know? Es que yo las armaba sin herramientas especiales, como un, un, una pieza para sostenerla en el aire. Por eso ah. tengo que darle vuelta. Okay, okay. Yeah, different aspect, you know? Dif different perspective. Okay. Thank Thank you. Sure, Ana Beatriz Sorry. Campos. Sí, como quedaron, teacher. Según tenía entendido, handlebar era tú. No. No, I said the following order. No es fijar frame. la manecilla. Ok, frame is the first one. Wheels is the second one. Pedal is the third one. Handlebar is the fourth one. Saddle is the fifth one. And Shipping is the sixth one. Nosotros lo hemos hecho con Jenny así y ahorita buscando en Google estaba viendo que decía en dos fijas manecilla, tres montar la rueda delantera, cuatro el siguiente la manecilla según la posición que desee. Okay. Y cinco montaje de los pedales. Yes. Por eso lo habíamos hecho, pero no lo habíamos visto antes con en Google con Jenny, pero sí lo habíamos hecho así, teacher. Okay. Sometimes we don't have to trust in Google because in Google we can find different kinds of information. And when you are going to look for information, you need to be sure um, about the kinds of resource where you are going to find out the information. Okay, but don't worry about it. Let us continue talking about, okay, let me see the time. Ooh. Okay, now uh, let's go to page number 
right here you are going to clarify some ideas that you you are, maybe you don't have clear that is going page 28 exercise number five we talk about how to use uh, indirect question yes no question and we have some um, sentences there but before that i would like to take some a few minutes in order to give you uh, an extra information about this topic and then you are going to have the chance to ask question based on the example that i'm going to show you but let me see if i got it here no it's not this one let me see which one is the right one okay it's gonna be this one Okay, I'm going to need that you help me reading because um, we already talked about this information, but uh, we need to clarify for some of you that maybe are confused about it. Okay, let us talk about indirect question and with the example. We already talked about what is that, but um, let me read the first uh, lines said that an indirect question is a question embedded inside a statement. Example could be a declarative sentence on another question, an interrogative sentence could be also. But let's start with a direct question. For example, we have, do you like cheese? Here, it is an an indirect question in a statement. For example, she asked whether I like chess. This one is direct and this one is indirect. She asked whether I like chess. Ella me preguntó si me gustaba el queso. En cambio, en la primera, es una pregunta directa. Do you like chess? ¿Le gusta el queso? Sí. The word whether could be replaced with if in this example. That is, we can say, uh, she asked if I like this. Could be in that way. But let us move forward. Okay, this example of indirect question. An indirect question can be embedded uh, in a statement, not a question or an other. For example, I wonder whether Anne is happy. The embedded uh, direct question is, la pregunta directa is, is Anne happy? This is a direct question within a statement, within a declarative sentence, o como una oración declarativa. Pero si ya en la primera parte yo tengo y le pongo lo, lo previo, I wonder whether or if Anne is happy. Me pregunto si Ana es feliz. Diferente es a decir, is Anna happy? Sí. Or, for the next example, do you know if anyone was listening? Do you know if anyone was listening? The embedded uh, question is, was anyone listening? La pregunta directa sería, was anyone listening? This is a direct question within a question. And also within an interrogative sentence. What about this one? Please find out what time the train is due. The embedded uh, direct question is, what time is the train due? Esta es la pregunta directa. Pero ya en forma indirecta sería, por favor, please find out what time the train is to. I remember that I gave you some uh, structure in order to understand this. And also we have some real life example in, of indirect question. For example, somebody said, I wonder whether 
other dogs thinks Paro are member of a weird religious cult. Uh, this one, the, this part uh, was said for somebody that is a comedian, that is Rita Runner. She was the one to say that. Or somebody said, does anyone know if Lamborghini makes wheelchair vehicles? American footballer Steve Lisson, who is battling low uh, Garrett disease. He was the one who, who said that. Or in order to know what he is, a man must first know what the sum of this mystery humanity is. A humanity made up of people who like himself do not understand what they are. Esto lo dijo Leo Tolstoy. Son expresiones that we can find um, in different books that they use uh, this kind of injured question. But in this example, maybe you see the kind of complicated. But what about this one? When a when, uh, direct question is a yes, no question, the indirect question will start with if or whether. Cuando son yes, no question, van a iniciar con eso antes de la frase previa. Por ejemplo, I'm asking if you are cold. Or I'm asking whether you are cold. The embedded uh, direct question is, are you cold? This is a yes, no question. Somebody wants to tell me uh, which one are yes, no question? Okay, let me see the time that I have here. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing here because I need to. show you something now. Do you remember that I gave you an structure? Se recuerda que yo le di una estructura eh, in the class number, I guess was 17. I don't know if you remember. No sé si se recuerda. We need to clarify it. I'm trying to get it. Do you remember or not? Just tell me. Se recuerdan o no se recuerdan? I already found it. Let me see if it's, it is this. No, 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 it's not this one. Okay. Do you remember, do you remember this uh, slice? Se recuerdan de esta diapositiva? Yes. Okay. Yes, teacher. We call it introductory phrases. And we have different ones. This one, for example, are the ones that are going to have a question mark. ¿Por qué van a tener un question mark? Porque ellas inician como que si fuese una pregunta. Do you know? Could you tell me? Can I ask you? Do you mind me asking? Do you mind telling me? If the phrase uh, is a question term, si la frase tiene forma de pregunta, use a question mark. ¿Sí? Entonces vamos a usar una forma, eh, un signo de pregunta. But if they are not questioned, so no question mark is needed. For example, I wonder, I was wondering, I don't know, I like to know, I need to know, please tell me where you live. En vez de que diga, where do you live? Porque es una pregunta directa. Entonces, aquí desaparece el auxiliar. I don't know if you remember that. 
and I gave you this example. But what I'm looking is the formula. I don't remember where I have it. But I remember that I show you the formula. I got it there. Okay. Uh, they form is subject plus pair and not auxiliary. Can you give me an example? Okay. This is uh, direct. Where do you live? What time is it? Y cuando son indirecto, dice, can you tell me where you live? We drop uh, the auxiliary. Or, or do you know what time it is? And know what time is it? You see? We make a switch. If I go back to the, the material, cost of the time, and try to resolve this one. Okay, the number one, I don't know, you are not seeing. Let me show you. Let me show you, I got it here. Okay, number one, can you tell me if the machinery capable of performing these processes? How you are going to use, use the introductory phrase in question to write in the yes, no question and compare answer with a pattern. Try to resolve it, please. I'm going to give you like, uh, let me see, five minutes to do it. Or if you want, we can uh, resolve now one by one right here. It's up to you. Mm, me teacher, the first? The first one? Uh, can you tell me the machinery is capable of performing this process? I guess. Mm. Mm. Can you tell me? The machinery is capable. There is something missing. ¿Qué será lo que falta? If. Can you tell me if? Ah, ah, okay. Okay, 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 okay. What about the second one? The right way is, uh, can you tell me if the machinery is capable of performing these processes? Okay, what about the second one? Uh, I'd like to know if the manufacturer will buy new machinery to produce or orders on time. Okay, nice. What about number three? Number three, number three, please. Uh, do you know if the schedule and production control mm -hmm. forms are complete? Okay, nice. Number four. Number four. I like to find out. Okay, continue. Hello, 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 hello.
Number four, number four, please. Number four. I like to find out if the operation describes the process parameters. Uh -huh. Number four, I like to find out if, okay, the operation plan describes, you need to add an S right here, describes, ¿por qué le vamos a agregar una S al verbo de escribir? Tell me why. Because we are going to drop out the auxiliary. Porque al momento de hacerla indirecta, vamos a quitar el auxiliar. This one, we don't, we don't need it. We don't need it. And for that reason, if we don't have auxiliary here, we need to have an S in this one. Describes the process. Okay? Comprendido? The, the verb first person in this case. The verb describes. Describes it because he's talking about the, the, the operation plan. Okay. And, and, and if we don't have the auxiliary, we need to add an S right here. Necesitamos agregarle una S porque ya no está el auxiliar y el verbo está siendo usado con algo que sería it in this case. Okay, number five. Number five, please. Number five. Do you have any idea? Continue. Hello. Teacher, is you have any idea for a small bat or mass production? Do you have any idea? We go for a small bat or is we will. Will we? Do you have any idea if we if we will go for a small batch of mass production? We made the switch oh, here. El, el will. Yeah, porque aquí estaría como la pregunta, pero como lo que vamos a hacer es cambiarla. Vamos a invertir ahí. Vale, entonces sería have... any idea. We go for a small batch of mass production. Do you have any idea if we will go for a small batch for mass production? Okay. Single will. Of course, you have to put it there. No, you need to put the will. Uh, I told you. ¿Y entonces ahí que se le quita? Aquí lo que se hace es que se invierte el orden. Mm. Porque si tiene usted, eh, let me show you here. Aquí invertimos el orden porque aquí está en forma de pregunta. ¿Sí? Mm. Entonces aquí tenemos Will que you cambiar. Have any idea? If we. If. Oh. If we will go for a small batch for mass production. 
If we will. Okay. Lo mismo que pasó aquí, de que como quitamos el auxiliar, entonces uh -huh. agarró inflexión este verbo. Agregamos una S. And the last one, number six, I was wondering. Uh -huh, I was wondering. If you receive. Ah, what? entonces, we are not going to do this. And right if here, we are, going to, we are going to add a letter D. E. Okay, ahí está, miren. Como no vamos a necesitar el auxiliar, entonces aquí vamos a hacer el pasado del verbo, porque es que aquí está en pasado. I was wondering if you receive the quote of the raw material provided. Estamos ahí, sí. ¿Qué es lo que puse? Una D. Yes, para hacerlo en tiempo pasado. ¿Por qué? I don't understand. <laughs> ok, Wendy, le explico en español y a colores. Miren. Sí, por favor. Ok, ahorita, a la hora de pasarla de forma indirecta, esta es una pregunta directa. Do you receive the quote of the raw material provider? Ahí está, en forma, en forma directa. Entonces yo la voy a cambiar a indirecta y voy a usar la expresión que tengo al inicio. Va a decir, I was wondering if few receive. Me preguntaba si usted recibió, entonces ya no necesito el did. Porque ya estoy comenzando desde aquí. Mm. Si fuese solo la pregunta sola, entonces si no necesitaríamos tener esto. En, en otras palabras, uh, si yo hago lo siguiente. Si yo marco esto desde aquí, del DID para adelante, la pregunta está en forma directa, pero yo quiero hacerla indirecta. Para eso yo le agrego esto previo. Voy a quitar el auxiliar. Y por ende, si voy a quitar el auxiliar, el verbo tengo que hacerlo en pasado. Cuando está él ahí, automáticamente por la presencia de él me la está haciendo en pasado. Pero como ya no lo voy a tener, entonces tengo que poner... El verbo tiene que cambiar a pasado. El verbo tiene que cambiar a pasado, cabal. Ah, ya, más o menos, hoy sí. Pero ah. en la... Está en la 3. No entiendo cuándo es el can you tell me. Yo soy... El, porque está Does she play tenis Creo que era Y yo solo le quitaba el das Y lo dejaba así Entonces no sé qué más hay que hacerle ahí Porque no me sale bueno el ir. Hablando de la número 3 Dice mm, De la 3 De eh, esta No, no, no Me refiero a, una, no. a la tarea In the plaza ah, ah, I got it I got it, ok, okay. Ah, okay. Con el if, quizás. Yes, you need to, you need to use if. Okay. Sí, we need to use if. Okay. Um, sí. let, let me do something before I forgot. Déjenme hacer algo antes de que se me vaya a olvidar. Porque ya después... Eh, I don't have time to do it. Or oh, I forgot to do it. Okay, let's see here. I need to send you this. <clears throat> Ooh, it's a super lento. I don't know why it's not working properly. Wendy, usted dice en la tarea, en la, en la, en el, en, el, ¿En la plataforma. Sí. Uh -huh. uh, es que se convierte el verbo play en tercera persona, o sea, de place, place, tenis. Es de quitar 
de lo mismo que pasó ahí, quizás, solo que al ah, revés. Se le quita el auxiliar DAS. Y, se le, y, y se es el, por el. Ah, pues dice, el, está hablando de el ella. El verbo. Ah, ok. Ok, eso debe ser. O sea, ¿qué quedaría? Can you tell me? Nada no, más. No, she plays. She plays tennis. If she plays tennis. Yes. Okay, I, I got an example of you, the one that you are telling me here. I don't know if it's going to be the same way, but as you, if you see the first one, where does she play tennis? How you are going to do it this one? Where does she play tennis? Uh, you are going to use, can you tell me? Esta es la frase que vamos a usar al inicio. Can you tell me? Ok, ¿cómo sería entonces? Can you tell me? Yes, can you tell me? It's where oh. she play tennis, plays tennis, teacher. Ok, ok, repeat again. Uh, can you tell me if where... She plays tennis. Okay, okay, ahí vamos a tener cuidado. Porque okay. si ya tengo, si ya tengo una WH word, ya no necesito el if. Ah, ok, teacher. Okay. Ahí ya no necesitamos el if. Ahí, ahí lo que va a decir es, can you tell me where? Uh -huh. Can you tell Entonces, me? Oh, sorry. Re repeat, eh, eh, Wendy. <laughs> Entonces, can you tell me where she plays tennis? Ah, ¿y qué es lo que tiene que hacer Wendy ahí? ¿Qué es lo que quita y qué es lo que pone? Diga. El, el auxiliar y ponerle la S a play. Okay. Ah, ah. Ok, what about the second one? De la segunda. Does, does he live in Paris? Y ahí en ese caso, ¿cómo sería? Siempre usando el can you tell me. Dar el auxiliar y ponerle la S al verbo. Can you tell me if ah, in okay. Paris? Ok, va. hasta ahí quería llegar. Ahí sí agregamos el if. Sí, ¿por qué agregamos el if? Porque no tenemos una palabra que comience con, con WH. -E -H. Ok, hoy sí creo que llegamos al punto. ¿Sí? Ok, uh, déjenme compartir. Esta se la voy a mandar ahorita porque después se me, se me satura ahí todo y no puedo. Entonces, espérenme un segundito que se los mando. Ahí van eh, como 30 ejercicios sobre eso. Y así para no quedarles mal porque después se me olvida y no tengo tiempo. Y mejor ahorita mismo, pero el grupo se me ha, se me ha extraviado. No sé dónde está. Alguien que envíe un mensajito para que aparezca porque tengo inmensidad de grupos. Let me see, I got it here, I guess it's this. Veamos si es este. Veamos si es ese, llegó, no llegó. <coughs> sí llegó. Ah, ok. Yes. Va, este sí se lo voy a mandar ahorita porque... Eh, Ahí sí hay inmensidad de ejercicio y ahí también claritos para que así no haya confusión. Se me ha puesto en huelga mi máquina, no sé por qué. A 
la clase 20, clase 20. I don't see it here. Ok, permítanme un segundo. It's not working, my camera is not working. Oh, I know what's happening here. Okay, un segundito, ya casi está. Okay, ahora sí. I got it here. Here we go. Okay, you yes, see it if you got it. Okay, en lo que paso lista creo que se va. Ya, ya se los envié, pero no se va. No sé por qué no se va. Teacher, no sale buena el live in Paris. Vamos a ver cómo es. Hola. La de Does he live in Paris? Es suelto como dijimos y no sale bueno. Ah, no, no sale. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you can write it down. How do you have it? I don't know. My computer is slow down. I don't know why. Okay, here we go. Ana Beatriz. Present teacher. Ana Lilian. Present. En Bautista. Present. Escobar. Present. Claudia. Present. Francis. Galileo. Present teacher. Jonathan. Present. Rodrigo. Present teacher. Eh, Carlos Rivas. Present. Laura. Present teacher. María Concepción. Present. María Elena. Present teacher. Mayra. Present teacher. Miguel Ángel. 
Saira, Misael, Present teacher, eh, Wendy, Present teacher, Jenny, yeah. Present teacher, Yesenia Lisset, Yesenia Lisset, Diego Ernesto. Present teacher. And um, Brian Javier. Okay, and now the term for Jenny Suleyma Santos. I don't know if you are going to have I mean, no me mencionó teacher, Zaira. Really? Será. Será, yeah. que, será que ya no miro. Zaira Marlene Larín. Ajá, present teacher. Is there? I'm sorry. I do really sorry. I apologize for that. Okay. Okay. Checaron el, el grupo si ya llegó lo que les envié o no. Yes, Mister. Si llegó. Ah, okay. Ah, yes, teacher. Vamos a hacer así. Eh, ahí hay unos ejercicios. Ustedes cuando tengan tiempo lo resuelven. Y cuando tengamos un espacio de un review, eh, I'm going to give you the answers in order that you can be sure. Déjeme ver ahí que me cae otro mensajito, pero no lo puedo mirar. Okay, dice, can you tell me if he lives in Paris? Can you tell me if he lives in Paris? Yes, teacher, eso sí está correcto. La siguiente, ¿no? And, and, and how do you have the, uh, the, the next one? ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo aparece la siguiente? Is he hungry? Ajá. Uh -huh. Entonces, can you tell me? If, ahí me perdí. Is, is she hungry? Ah, ojo con eso. Cuando tenemos una forma del vía, ¿dónde va? Por ahí hay una, hay una, uh, creo que en, no sé si en esta diapositiva les aparece la estructura. Can you tell me if she is hungry? If she is hungry. Ah, ah, ah ok. Change the is. You need, yeah, you need to make a switch like the example that I gave you. Así parecido al ejemplo que les di cuando hice las flechitas. ¿Sí? Ok, thank you. I don't know what is happening with my computer. Ok, I got it. Ok. Por ahí les dejo la, la diapositiva esas. Um, ahí están los ejercicios, pueden realizarlos. Uh, I'm going to try to send you the, the resource uh, slices. Voy a tratar de enviarles las anteriores para que les queden ahí y puedan leerlas. Remember that we are uh, close to finish. Tomorrow we are going to start the last week and we are going to finish the next uh, weeks, okay? Try to participate and, and talk about different topics that we are going to study. And try to do your best, okay? And I'm sorry for the, the, the minute that, that, that we're talking not to, to be talking about. Okay. Y la próxima está mala, dice, mire. Oh, Kidoki, gracias por el tiempo. For me, only for me. <laughs> Yo le he hecho mal. <laughs> only for you. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, have a good night and I hope to see you tomorrow. Yeah. And if, if you have any question, if you have any question about some exercises that you have there, just let me know. I'm going to give you some ideas. Okay. Okay, okay teacher. Good night. Good night. Bye bye. See you. Take care. Bye bye. Good night. Good night, teacher. God bless you. Okay. Thank See you. you. If he lives in Paris, can you tell me the next is bad? But I don't see which one is the next one. Jenny. 
Hello, Jenny. Hello, teacher. Can you hear me, Jenny? I want to review the indirect question. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Tell me. Es, en esa clase no estuve y he visto los ejemplos. Entendí un poquito, pero sí sería bueno repasarlo. Okay, let me show. Las reglas. Sí, sí, sí. Déjenme mostrarle algo aquí. Porque esas no las tiene usted, creo que no las tiene. Ok. Um, let me see here. I need to open it. Sí, porque si no, no va a poder hacer los ejercicios que tenemos ahí. Creo que fue la... Fíjese que la plataforma ya lo hice y sí me salieron. Lo que hice fue ver el libro, los ejemplos. Ok. Y usé como lo mismo. Sí, 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 me salió. Pero en la que le acabo de enviar he puesto otro tipo. A ver. En la que le mandé ahorita. ¿Dónde te dice? Ah, le, eh, lo de la clase 20. Las... Sí. Sí. Ahí en la clase 20 le puse otras. Pero déjenme buscarle las reglas. No sé qué le está pasando. Mi máquina se está quedando muy, muy lenta. Ok, I got it. I got it. I got it. Ok, I'm going to show you something. I don't know if you, if, if you uh, started this. ¿Se recuerda de esta? Sí, o no. No, no en, esta porque, en esta porque no estuvo. Sí, ya no estuve. Sí. Ok, mira, aquí tenemos en la primera una pregunta directa. Dice, who is she? ¿Quién es ella? Uh -huh. O where can I sit? Son preguntas directas. Ahora, ¿cómo puedo yo cambiarlas a indirectas? Yo puedo anteponer algo aquí. Por ejemplo, dice, do you know who she is? Quiere decir que yo hice un cambio aquí. ¿Qué es lo que cambié? El verbo. Cambié el orden del Hasta verbo. el final. Uh -huh. Sí, el, la forma del B la puse al final. Uh -huh. ¿Sí? Uh -huh. Y aquí, por ejemplo, dice, can you tell me where I can sit? Y arriba dice, where uh -huh. can I sit? Entonces siempre hago un cambio. Uh -huh. ¿Sí? Y eso es lo que muchos de los compañeros suyos no le prestan atención. Y ese ejemplo ya se los di. Uh -huh. Ahora, ¿cómo puedo, por ejemplo, yo hacer que, que no lleve, eh, por ejemplo, este, el signo? Si, el, si la frase que lleva aquí no tiene nada que ver con forma de pregunta, entonces no va a llevar signo. Aquí uh -huh. dice, he is asking who she is. Él está pues preguntando es. quién es ella, ¿sí? Uh -huh. Ahí no tenemos nada. Dice, los indirect questions are structured like a statement. Las preguntas indirectas pueden ser como una oración. Uh -huh. ¿Sí? Sí. Ok. Y luego dice, I wonder where I can sit. Me pregunto dónde yo puedo sentarme. Uh -huh. ¿Sí? No dice dónde, dónde puedo yo, sino que dónde yo puedo. Uh -huh. ¿Sí? Look, no question mark. No necesitamos aquí signos de pregunta. Ok, y ahí tenemos formation and rules. When should we use indirect questions? ¿Cuándo nosotros de, de, deberíamos de usar preguntas indirectas? When we want to sound more polite. Cuando queremos sonar más corteses. What makes indirect question different? ¿Qué es lo que hace diferente a las preguntas indirectas? They have an introductory phrase. Ellas tienen una frase introductoria. ¿Sí? Their form is, la forma de ellos es, primero va a ir el sujeto, después va a ir el verbo, and no auxiliary. Ahí no vamos a necesitar auxiliar. Ejemplo, can you give an example? Ok, tengo una directa. Dice, where do you live? 
Esa es la pregunta directa. Ahora, ¿cómo puedo hacerla yo indirecta? Le voy a quitar el auxiliar, porque arriba me está diciendo que no necesito llevar auxiliar, solo necesito llevar el sujeto y el verbo. Entonces va a decir, can you tell me where? Y ahora sí aplico, sujeto y verbo, que está del mismo color. Uh -huh. Where you live. Uh -huh. ¿Sí? Uh -huh. Entonces estoy cumpliendo con esta regla que está en celeste, ¿ve? que es el sujeto y el verbo, y después ya no voy a llevar auxiliar. Uh -huh. Es decir, desapareció que el do. ¿Sí? Uh -huh. Y en la siguiente dice, what time is it? What time is it? Y dice, do you know what time it is? Uh -huh. Aquí cambio. Feliz, feliz pasa al final. ¿Estamos claros hasta ahí? Sí. Ok. Uh -huh. Si quiere, hago un screenshot de esa slide porque esa no la tiene. Para que le quede ahí y lo compare con lo que va a hacer después. Yes. Ok. Ahora aquí están las frases introductorias. Cuando veamos estas frases al inicio, sí van a llevar signo de pregunta. Por ejemplo, dice, do you know, sabe usted, can you tell me, podría decirme, ¿sí? Can I ask you, do you mind me asking, would you mind telling me? Todas esas son frases que se usan. Sí, son introductorias, pero que se usan para hacer preguntas. Por lo tanto, si la frase es un, tiene forma de pregunta, vamos a usar un signo de pregunta. Yo puedo decir, do you mind me asking where you live? Aquí hay, ya acordémonos que aquí ya no va a ir el auxiliar, ya no va a decir, where do you live? Porque no sería pregunta directa. Sí. Aquí ya le quitamos el, 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 el auxiliar, ponemos el sujeto y el verbo y no va a ir más aquí. Uh -huh. Ok. And let me see. And this one. Y esta es diferente, mire. Esta ya no son de preguntas. Solo dice, I wonder. Me pregunto, where you live? Aquí ya no lleva signo de pregunta. ¿Por qué? Uh -huh. Porque they are no question, so no question mark. Porque estas no son usadas para hacer preguntas, por lo tanto no llevan. Pero sí. siempre le voy a quitar el auxiliar, voy a usar que al final va a llevar el sujeto más el verbo y no va a llevar auxiliar aquí. ¿Ok? Sí, sí, sí. Y, y aquí ya tenemos algunos ejemplos y una práctica que hicimos, donde dice transform the sentence from... Direct into indirects. Y uh -huh. ahí tenemos las directas. Mire lo que le dice la directa. Va el auxiliar, el verbo más el sujeto. Uh -huh. Estamos hablando de precisamente de esto. Se va el tú. Uh -huh. Auxiliar sería este. Sujeto sería este. Y el verbo sería este. Que es lo que me está diciendo aquí, mire. Entonces vengo yo y le trazo una línea para acá. Eh, Después vengo y uh, aquí está como que okay, invertido, pero en este caso eh, yo tengo el verbo en este lado. ¿sí? Okay. Y ahí, por ejemplo, eh, déjenme borrar acá esto. Okay. Dice, where is, where is the school? Where is the school? O how old are you? Son cosas directas. Pero lo que nos interesa más que todo a nosotros es al momento de hacer las indirectas. Que dice que no va a llevar auxiliar, va a ir el sujeto y el verbo. Uh -huh. Y sí. el verbo to be se va hasta el final, ¿verdad? Y, si ese va, y ese se va a ir al final. Aquí es donde le iba a hacer la marca, mire. Y se la dice donde no es. Entonces aquí tenemos el sujeto, que sería you, y el verbo que sería lie. Auxiliar no va a llevar. Aquí no hay do. Y por ejemplo, aquí dice, where is the school? 
Voy a quitar el auxiliar, que en este caso es un helping verb, el is, lo voy a pasar al final, entonces para decir where the school is. is. Uh -huh. ¿Sí? Lo mismo pasó aquí, how old are you? How old you are? Miren, ¿cómo hicimos el cambio? Pasamos este para acá y este para acá a la hora de hacer la indirecta. Si quiere, haga un screenshot de esa, porque los ejercicios que le mandé eh, son precisamente referentes a esta parte. Le vamos a borrar las líneas para que no le salga. Ok, ahí las puede hacer. Bueno. Ya está. Ok. Sí, básicamente son tres reglas, ¿verdad? La primera es llevar una frase introductoria. Sí. La segunda es que se va el auxiliar. Y la tercera es el verb to be. Sí, si y, sí y la diferencia de, de la directa a la indirecta es que aquí no va a haber auxiliar, va a ir el sujeto y va a ir el verbo. Uh -huh. en, en cambio, al otro lado, eh, 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 es en forma inversa, que sería el verbo y el sujeto. Y como aquí uh -huh. se, le, se le da vuelta. ¿Sí? Uh -huh. Ok. Sí. Bueno, yo creo que con eso ya le queda más claro porque ya aquí, uh, bueno, ahí habla algunas cosas donde dice if we are dealing with a yes no question, si estamos tratando con una yes no question, uh, you must use if or whether, que, uh -huh. que significa entonces que si estamos tratando con una que sea yes no question, vamos a usar if, que es lo que hicimos en el ejercicio anterior. Sí. ¿Sí? Después de la frase introductoria va a ir if. Uh -huh. Sí. sí. A esas serían como, bueno, no llevarían el sin. Bueno, sí llevan el sin porque el ejercicio de la plataforma no me salía porque no, no le había colocado el signo. Ajá, ok. Sí, pero es que en esta sí porque ya le está diciendo que son yes, no question. Ajá. Sí. Ajá. Aquí, por ejemplo, it is the language school. Can you tell me if this is the language school? Y aquí puedo usar if o puedo usar where. Where. Sí, o do you like vegetable? Esta es pregunta directa. Luego aquí mm -hmm. voy a quitar el auxiliar. I wonder if o I wonder whether you like vegetable. Me pregunto si, usted, si a usted le gustan los vegetales. Y lo otro, teacher, también estaban los ejercicios con el if, pero las terceras personas sí llevaban ese. Sí, 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 ahí sí. Se sí. aplica. Sí, uh -huh. sí, ¿por qué? ¿Por qué van a llevarlo? Porque acuérdese que como vamos a quitar eh, el auxiliar, uh -huh. cuando es, por ejemplo, eh, en tercera persona, como quitamos el auxiliar, entonces automáticamente el verbo es el que sufre el cambio. Uh -huh. ¿Sí? Uh -huh. Sí. Ok, entonces ahí habían algunos ejemplos. Este, do you like football? Like I wonder if you like if you like football. Ya no ya no usamos el do you do you, sino que uh -huh. quitamos eso. Like. Sí. Mire aquí, mire aquí por ejemplo, aquí está lo que me está diciendo. Does your sister play tennis? Tennis. Ajá. Uh -huh. If your sister plays. Okay. Entonces viene usted y se dice, I wonder if your sister plays. Aquí le agrego la s. Porque ya quité el das. ¿Sí? Uh -huh. Ok. Sí. Si quiere haga una screenshot de esa. Sí. Para que le ayude a, a ver los uh, ejemplos. Voy a tratar de enviarles esta yeah. también para que les quede ahí. Uh -huh. Ok. Sí. I don't know if you have another question. Creo que es en la última slide que tengo ahí. Creo que con eso ya le quedó bastante ¿Sí? claro. Sí. Ok. O sea, a veces cuando toca hablar es como quizá difícil de armar cuando uno no tiene mucho vocabulario. Sí. Creo que es lo que más cuesta. Sí, pero es la práctica. 
es la práctica y hay que aprender, este, además de aprender las estructuras, también tengo yo que organizarme en la mente para al inicio, pues ya después cuando ya usted ya tiene la práctica, usted solo suelta y ahí va. Uh -huh. ¿Sí? Sí. Y usted de repente dice, ¿Y qué, ¿qué es lo que dijo? ¿Cómo es lo que lo dijo? Y así, pero, pero es por la práctica. Uh -huh. Pero eh, han avanzado al menos. Bueno, yo siento, no sé usted qué dirá, pero yo sí siento que sí, eh, los que han participado, he visto que sí han ido evolucionando de cómo venían. Uh -huh. pero, sí. pero no sé, cada quien dirá tal vez lo diferente. Ya se está quitando el miedo. Ya se les está quitando el miedo, cabal. Sí, porque aunque uno se equivoque, si no lo intenta. Pues así es esto. De, uh -huh. de, de los errores se aprende. Así es. Muy Así bueno. es. Ok, gracias. To gracias stay. a usted. Ok, I hope to see Thank you tomorrow. Much. Good night. Tomorrow. Bye. Bye.